Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. I, uh, Jungle just told me he's slightly behind. We'll see what that means. I'm going to let you guys know to. Let you guys know to throw some questions in. Just talk to you all until Jungle Man Dan arrives, ready for battle. Just be doing this. Um, I guess I don't need. Well, whatever. Pappy Van Winkle, good to see you. Moonlight Master, good to see you as always. Techno Feeling, Araz. Very good to see you. Thank you for the birthday wishes to Farah and the good luck wishes to me. Yeah, I was actually going to surprise Farah, but I have a, a banner for her right there. It uh, it took me longer than it should have. Well, like it wasn't actually that hard, but I spent forever trying to make it look good in the overlay, and that was just wasn't going to happen. I needed to get it into Photoshop and like round the the corners and all, and there was no time left. But it is my wife's birthday. <laughs> Pappy Van Winkle throws an actual cue in. Topher Drew, good to see you in here. Um, Roz, Roz, thank you for the help. What are good situations to turn a maid hand into a bluff? Um, so let's talk about first uh, when it's not a good situation to turn a maid hand into a bluff. Uh, it's not a good idea to turn a maid hand into a bluff if your opponent is not a good hand reader. Um, it's also not a good idea to turn a maid hand into a bluff when your opponent has repped a polarized range and then checks a river that is not really board changing. So one of the best times to, to turn a maid hand into a bluff is let's say it's hold them and your opponent has, um, you know, check raised a uh, queen eight seven flop and bet big on a deuce turn. And then the river is a jack and they check. Now, they're not likely to, like any two pair that they were playing this way, a two pair set can keep betting on the river. This is obviously a simplification. We didn't talk about stacks, we didn't talk about anything else, but um, they would have continued value betting their value range. And so they actually did rep polarized range. Uh, so I'm kind of correcting myself, but well, no, I'm not correcting myself. There's the caveat did not improve, but when the Jack hit the river, it's now likely that they had a hand like Jack 10 or Jack nine that uh, was previously bluffing now made a hand that's not good enough to value bet, but too good to bluff. And so now it's a good opportunity to turn a hand like eight X into a bluff. It's not the best board because some other draws did miss and they, they might, you know, uh, end up looking you up, but that's kind of the idea. So turn made hands into bluffs against good hand readers. And uh, because a lot of people like to take their made hands to showdown rather than do that. Just want to sit in case he shows up and I'm still talking to you all because I'm distracted. Um, and in spots where your opponent is is not polarized, so is likely to have some hands that can beat your made hand, but, uh, you know, a, a better example of that board is let's say the river's the, uh, 10 of spades, the flop had two spades and the river's the 10 of spades. Now it's, uh, what did I say? Queen eight, seven, two spades, deuce, 10, your opponent check raised bet and check river. Now everything got there and now turning your eight into a bluff is, is more valuable. Although your opponent will check some more like two pair on that river. Anyways, uh, are you playing any more challenges soon? Asked Pappy Van Winkle, or is it too tough to find an opponent to play? It's too tough to find an opponent to play, but not because I'm so scary. There are people who are willing to play me um, overseas, but I am, I don't want to say stuck in Nevada, but I mean, I, I've really settled down here and it's tough with my son in school and our routines here to, to just pick up and leave for two months uh, like I did in 2020 to uh, go to the, I'm getting a message from Jungle to um to go play challenges so i i i'm hoping that you know 
with the progression of regulation in the US, um, you know, more sites open up and allow for interstate play. And we get more options in Nevada and, and more options elsewhere. And maybe they partner with Ontario, who has regulated online poker. And then we, we just get more options. Um, he's editing his overlay. Um, okay. Who's my 18th favorite poker player, excluding yourself or a close friend? That's too hard. Because I, I, I know that's a funny question, but I would think it through really hard. And I, I, we don't have time for that. Uh, when does this start? It starts now, but Jungle Man is running a little bit late. I suggest you challenge Nick Airball to heads up. Um, I actually reached out when I was, uh, whatchamacallit, moderating, arbitrating uh, at the beginning, and I let him know, because like, they were only playing three days a week, that I'd play a couple times on stream here in Vegas if he wanted to. And he was like, yeah, that sounds good, but you know, nothing ever came of it, and he's actually now busy during the week, so maybe one day. Let's rake back part of the challenge. We're no, so we're we're um we're cross booking, but the we're kind of just not taking the rake into account in the cross book. So the rake is I mean rake should be relatively equal for both of us, so it's effectively not part. Um it's the best way to make 10k a month in poker. My skills are average. Uh if your skills are average, you need to find a a good game, basically. Um or and or improve your skills and improving your skills is going to help you more over the long run potentially than finding a good game because that good game might go away but if you work on your game you'll be able to leverage that for a long time to come whether it's in good games or less good games that you can still beat crazy bro forgot i left this up suddenly phil's voice comes into my ears when i'm trying to solve a work issue well hopefully it was calming and it helped you uh, solve your work issue Andy Mitch, thank you very much. I went like, go backwards cap. I like it. Ready to throw down. No, I just was not ready to, to make my hair look presentable today. Uh, how much money to not play a single hand of poker for the rest of your life? I don't know. I don't want to think about that. Uh, what's up, everyone? Good luck today, Phil. Thank you. Um, I actually don't like PLO better than No Limit. I just don't get to play much No Limit because I'm not, I haven't played No Limit in like 15 years. I'm not that good at it. Um, I was, I asked for a heads up challenge that, you know, somebody who would play here in Nevada uh, in No Limit um, with the caveat that I won't take on all comers because I have not played it really. But I want to, I wanted to find somebody who would be like a, a fair fight because I really wanted to brush up on No Limit. Um, I think No Limit's a really fun game. I think PLO is a really fun game. I don't, I, I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other um, in terms of like on the merits of the game, but um, I'm much better at PLO. What should I get my wife for Mother's Day? That is an excellent question that I am asking myself. So good luck. Is it Farrah's birthday? Yes, it is Farrah's birthday today. Andre says, hello, Phil. Good luck from Russia. Thank you very much. Fast will I earn money if I pay for your course? Um, depends which course you're talking about, and also, I mean, it it just totally depends. There's no way to predict. You could you could buy a course and still be losing money if you don't apply it well, and or a host of other reasons. Um, so, um, for people who have never bought a poker course, I recommend starting out with uh, from the ground up, which is only fifty bucks and should be a lot more uh, on runatonce.com. Uh, just cause it's, we intentionally priced it low to, to be excellent value and get people in the door so that they can improve and then consume our other products. Because basically we used to just have only very advanced stuff and, uh, there was no on-ramp to, to getting to that. So Phil, how much aggression is jungle generating from mergey turn value bets? You know, I, I watched a little bit of his stream back, but not enough to really know. So I don't really know. Um, did it seem like he was making a lot of mergy turn value bets um, last session? Moonlight Master is fair as birthday. It means we have to win. Exactly. Uh, do I use ChatGPT actively? It's a mind-blowing tool. Yes, I do. I actually tweeted uh, two days ago or so about AI in general, just that uh, I've been fascinated with it and paying a lot of attention to it. And I think 
actually talks about how a lot of people are using it wrong, specifically ChatGPT, though, and I didn't specify it, but that's mostly what people are using. Um, yeah, I mean, I think AI is going to change the world as we know it uh, quite drastically in the same way that the internet did. Um, so I think it's important to be up to date with it and, and keep learning. I, I think a lot of people are taking the approach of like, oh, how can I use this to generate an, a fully automated business that is going to make me rich? And I think that's, it's just too ambitious for what the tools are. Could somebody do it? Maybe. But um, I think people need to start by automating things in their daily life and just getting used to the tools and then you'll see opportunities later as you go. Henry Kilbane, good to see you, man. Like Alpha winning 80K today. You heard it here first. Okay, I'll take it. Henry's often right. So, so there you go. My master, I dare you to be wrong. Uh, any plans to play in Austin at Doug's Polk's Lodge? He he uh, he and I talked about playing a half half match there someday. Um, I don't know. The answer is I don't know. Can't keep up. Do you watch the stream over? Uh, seeing Jungle Man's whole cards. So I don't. I don't watch the stream while I play. Uh, yesterday night I watched some of it back. Um, in large part for entertainment value, but, um, but also to see how he was playing. Um, but you know, I, there, there are only so many hours in the day, so I stream and then I finish and I get to work. I mean, today, for example, I'm going to stream, I'm going to work for just a couple hours and I'm going to pick up my son and, um, then get ready and, and go to a birthday dinner for Farah. So like, I'm not going to watch his stream tonight. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I think it'll be useful and probably, and you know what? I didn't watch his stream back last time, which I should have, because I had a lot of time in between last time we played and this time. Um, but maybe I'll do that between tomorrow. So we're playing again tomorrow at 9.30. Maybe I'll do that between then and the next session. Um, Jungle Man's showing me a message about a guy working on his overlay and Jungle Man thinks it means he'll be back very fast, but I read it as it's going to take a while. So I'm letting Jungle Man know that that's how I interpreted it. Um, is there a path to rush free interactive releasing run at once in Nevada in the next three years? Um, I'm so run at once is run at once poker is no longer officially my company uh, as run at once, uh, or sorry, as rush free interactive bought it as you. Uh, mentioned. Um, so I'm not the, basically, I can't slash shouldn't, um, like make what would be some, something that would be contained in a press release, make, you know, break a story, break a statement like that. Um, so I, I'm going to decline to answer what I, what I will say about Nevada. Um, and I talked about this in my last newsletter. Um, a lot of sites are struggling to get into Nevada. Um, I know two major sites that have been trying for a while, uh, and have not gotten in. I believe it's due to weird software regulation or so something that is causing problems. Um, and it's also problematic for these sites because there's no online casino in Nevada and that is what generates a lot of the money. A lot of people do uh, sports casino and poker, and then they use poker to kind of, well, retain players from their other verticals who want to play everything, but also acquire players in poker and then have them play other games, which are actually more profitable because they don't make that much money from poker specifically. And so it's less attractive to, to start uh, to open poker here. So I, I really hope several more sites, including us, get in to Nevada because I would love to have some other options to play on and, and see some more action and some more marketing money poured into the games here. Um, but yeah, it seems, it, it seems to take a while. Uh, this is not a new challenge. So we've played, uh, this will be the fifth day of the challenge, um, that we played. It's been spread out. Uh, last time we played was a couple months ago, I think. Yeah. Two months ago, as Moonlight Master pointed out, um, 
and he should know because he was making highlight videos from it. Um, shout out Moonlight Master. Um, we've played about a third of the challenge. We The challenge is 7,500 hands. We played about a third of it. He is up about 65K. So on my other, this is the screen I'll be playing with. You can see up there uh, that it's, we're playing 1020, but it's a cross book. It's 100, 200 real stakes over there. All the way on the right, I'll have my um, results from this session that I'll update in real time down there on the bottom right past the happy birthday Farah banner. Happy birthday, honey. Um, has the results up until now, uh, roughly. And they were exact before yesterday's session, but um, I have to approximate yesterday's session because we'll get the hands from, we'll get the exact results from WSOB after this week of play. Um, okay. Have I dabbled in competitive games outside of poker? You play a lot of pool personally. Not really. I mean, I played pool with friends growing up, but uh, I also played poker with friends going, growing up and had no idea what I was doing uh, and like never played it strategically um, is how I would say it. So no, poker's the main... I mean, I've always considered myself a competitive person, but more competitive with myself. Uh, actually, I don't know. But like I played a lot of sports growing up. I played video games growing up. But since poker, yeah, there's really nothing else that I... That I play. Uh, that's very competitive. What's the best way to improve at PLO? Uh, it varies for everybody, but I think um, if you're starting out, definitely a course of some kind because it's structured, uh, or a book because it's structured from kind of A to Z. Whereas if you just uh, watch streams like this, which I will try to be educational uh, as I talk about how I play, um, I'm not, as I talk through the strategy of these hands, I'm not specifically designing the strategy conversation to take a beginner, let's say, um, from there to understanding the, the building blocks of strategy and then so on and so forth. I'm kind of just talking about what's on my mind, which um, has a lot of assumptions built in that, that you know, somebody who's been playing poker for a while would know, but somebody who hasn't been playing a lot wouldn't. Um, so I think, you know, watching a stream is not the best way to take your game, you know, from like the very beginning to uh, expert, but I think streams being free uh, are an excellent resource, but I would start actually by spending money first on a course or a book. And then, you know, depending on how much you want to invest, you could go right from there to a course to training software, etc. cetera. Or uh, if you're not looking to spend that much money, I would still recommend start with a course that's like, you know, under $200 uh, or a book, and then access all the free resources after that, because that'll help you, you know, build the foundation to then understand what's going on in all of the streams, etc. Fallow, good to see you. Haven't been able to catch much of these. Where does it stand? Good luck today. Oh, I did just answer that, so you probably caught it. But I mean, you're on a five-minute delay. Um, does it run at once have 99 uh, No Limit MTT courses? I believe our uh, cheaper of the options is a uh, $140, $149. Um, let's open... Run it once. Whoops. Sorry, and I have to okay, go into incognito mode so that uh, we Okay, this is not the right view for this. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um so from the ground up, this is a course I recommended earlier uh, because it's just the best value. Um, and it includes a free month of Essential, which is $25 value. So it's 50 bucks plus free $25 value. Um, from the ground up, MTT is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, $149.99. Uh, you can check this page and you can see what all of the videos are, including a description. Um, and then our most popular course on our entire site here's from the ground up sit and go most popular course uh on the entire site is an mtt course called pads on pads uh perfecting analysis decision and strategy from patrick leonard who is absolutely excellent and has put together over 220 videos uh more than 115 hours of content including so he made this 
couple of years ago, year and a half ago. And then just this year, he updated with like 60 more hours of content. Um, I might be getting that number wrong, but it's something like that. So it goes from post-flop, uh, pre-flop, post-flop, PSQOs, ICN, live plays, guests, heads up off the table. I mean, it's just a lot. I mean, as you can see here, it's just a ton of stuff. And this is just from the post-flop chapter. Um, and then you go down each and you can see uh, we have this new highlight for things he just put together this year as well. Not that it needed updating, but um, but yeah, basically, um, if you're serious about MTTs, I think, uh, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but I, I think this is the best way to go if you're very serious about MTTs. Um, Patrick just went so far above and beyond um, what what you should deliver in a course. So um, I'm just very thankful he came to Run It Once to do it. But yeah, that's uh, runitonce.com slash courses. Uh, you can check out all of our courses. Okay, close that. Okay, Jungle Man says he's ready. So let's do it. So I, um, for those who have watched the previous streams, you'll know that I'm not going to be seeing the chat as much as, as much as, uh, well, as much as I just was. I'm not going to see it very much because I'm going to focus on beating Jungle Man Dan. Um, um, but I will be talking about my thoughts and trying to play my best. And uh, I very much encourage you, you all to continue chatting and chatting to each other. Um, and also I have a, so Moonlight Master is in the chat and he's going to uh, uh, kind of let me know if, if there's anything like he'll, he'll, if there's kind of uh, some like key questions that people were really curious about, um, he can let me know and, and maybe in a, whether it's a tweet or um, a follow up video um, or I can address, could address them at the end of the stream or the start of next stream, um, he'll let me know. Okay. Um, so we are about to get going. I should open. You can't see what I'm doing. But this is where I. This is where I edit the results. Um, just put that down here, and I should move OBS away. Um, I did get a comment. I'm not gonna see it before the chat. I got a comment that um, that people would people watching on phones would like to see it more zoomed in. So I'm actually gonna try that real quick. I have a lot of uh, stuff going on. Okay. So let's try. So I'm gonna zoom in a little more. And if everybody hates this, tell Moonlight Master and Moonlight Master tell me. But um, but I want people. That was the feedback I got. Is it's just hard to read what was going on on mobile. So if we zoom like this, you'll see my cards. You won't see my bet buttons. But I think um, you'll see all of the cards in action. I think that'll be a little better. Um, Moonlight, please uh, hit me up if they do not like this. And I will adjust it uh, when I'm able. But hopefully this will help with uh, those of you watching on mobile. Jungle Man also said that, uh, I mean, he told me this in advance. He can't play too long today. And that's fine with me because I have uh, uh, Bear's birthday to get to uh, later. So it's a little unfortunate we're starting late. We might not have uh, a lot of action today, but there will be a lot of action within the time that we're playing. Uh, that's almost a guarantee based on how the previous sessions have gone.
All right. Well, we might get time for you to give me feedback on the... Uh, uh, Alex Wang asks, what's the number on the counter of my water dispenser? Which, by the way, I need to change the filter. You know, it's the red one. Um, 11,680. That's the uh, number of water bottles saved or something. That has served me almost 12,000 water bottles. I, uh, I like water quite a bit. Just browsing real quick. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Arbs, good to see you. Hope to see you this summer too. Um, when can we expect to see Filver's Berry Sweet? For the reason I mentioned earlier, it's really tough to uh, make that challenge happen, nor am I very excited about making that challenge happen. But. Um, I'd like to I'd like to test myself against him one day. Not in a um not in like a 200 400 50k hand challenge though. That's for sure. Uh we're on a 5 minute delay, Matt. So and we're not us uh, and Jungle will be on one too. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, thank you to everybody in chat who's answering before I could. Um, aren't I worried of Jungle Man or other pros learning from you streaming your high-end PLO matches? Um, not really because I make training. I mean, I have a, a course that's something like 75 hours of me teaching PLO and going through hands that I played. And, um, I think, I think one of the downsides of a stream compared to that is when I'm making a course, I can kind of go through my thoughts more carefully, but when I'm in the moment, you might be able to see like, I don't know. Glad I caught that in time, just because it makes the accounting harder. And I'm sure Jungle Man's gonna sit with him now and play. Yeah. Okay, so they're gonna play this table. That's fine. And we'll get another table up shortly. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I think my leaks will show a little bit more on stream, specifically, um, you know, Jungle Man's messaging. That's okay, okay. Um, why can't I find? I don't haven't opened another of the same table yet. Weird. Okay. sit at a anyways my point was when you watch a stream I have to react in real time and you can see like probably maybe I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't speak about what I think is the most valuable <laughs> um I'll, I'll keep it to myself but basically uh you can see more like you can see more emotion or and or kind of like what's my gut reaction to a spot. So you'll see some spots where I'm like, uh, I sometimes end up making 
kind of the right play. By right, I mean what I should do, but sometimes my gut reaction is off because when you play poker, you have to deal with your emotions and um, make the right plays in spite of them sometimes. And so uh, it's very easy to have like... Um, sorry, I'm getting moderately frustrated that it's going to be a short session again. Um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> Basically, um, your emotions come into play and, uh, you kind of have to, how do I put it? fight through them to find the right play or make the right play in spite of your emotion, emotions. So sometimes, let's say you have a fear of making a big hero call. Then when you face a big river bet, your first reaction is going to be like, oh man, um, I think I have to fold. Uh, and sometimes because I'm streaming, I'll verbalize that. And then you get to see a little bit of, of my kind of natural like what to call it, inclination or a natural state. Let's see if we're still lined up in the, this will work. But is that better with me centered rather than the table centered? I think it probably is, but no, that looks too weird. We want the whole card centered, or sorry, the, the board cards centered. Um... Anyway, uh, I often will, you know, have a gut reaction to a spot and then think back and think through it and say, oh, well, you know what, am I, do I want to fold because of a logical reason or do I want to fold because I'm afraid of losing a big pot? And then I have to think through, okay, so what are the logical reasons to, to call here? What are the logical reasons to fold and uh, go through it? And so you catch yourself, but when you're on your C game, when you haven't slept enough, uh, or whatever, uh, else is going on, like you're distracted by making a banner overlay for your wife or your opponent is late, um, then you will sometimes, your kind of emotional defaults will leak through in certain spots, uh, more often. Check more, uh, Uh, why did I choose green for my color, uh, channel? So I guess you can't see. Oh, you can see. There's green behind me. Um, basically, because there's green on both the walls behind me, and my videos always included them, we went with green for the channel. The reason there's green on both my walls behind me is because my favorite color. Um, but there, it wasn't, you know, that well thought through. It just felt like it went with the background behind me. Computer way better zoomed out, but I understand catering to mobile. So Michael Bennett wants to see the bet buttons. Hmm. Roz likes it better zoomed in. Bocek, Bocek, Bocek says phone viewers can zoom on the phone. All right. It seems like it's very split. Crazy pro. Can someone tell Phil to win more and lose less? Okay. Now I I heard it, so that's what I will do. I guess I'll move this over here so you can see my face. Mm -mm -mm. Do I ever review Jungle Man's point of view? Yeah, so I watched a little bit last night, but 
gentleman's having some technical difficulties. Do I know uh, uh, Limitless? I mean, I've spoken to him. I have his phone number, but we haven't really hung out. Okay, I'm getting some feedback from Moonlight that we want to make sure we can see Jungle Man's whole cards at Showdown. So that should do it. Thank you. It's, it's a little... Um, the one thing that I don't like about... Uh, oh, he's sitting over here. Okay, he'll still be on screen. Uh, the one thing I don't love about streaming these, especially because every time we stream there's an issue um, setting up, is that I don't get to kind of prepare before my sessions mentally. Um, and so I think I'm always kind of playing my C game or at least starting off on my C game, often playing my C game in these, um, my sessions against jungle. And I don't, it's not that, I, I mean, that's my responsibility, not anybody else's, but I don't love that that's the kind of foot I'm putting forward for you all. But I will do my best to play my best. Let's go. I have to open. Um. This one. And I think small bet is, is the way to get the right amount of money in against different hand categories. Do we think he knows he's sitting out on the other table? Deuce Dangler, I think it's probably not a three bet, especially because he um, because he opened limps some. Uh, I'm just gonna go pot pot, I think. go either way on the right. <clears throat> Let me go with check, check, bet. Although this makes a really good turn bet. Mm. Let's, let's just stick with the plan. Betting turns like this. I mean, it's a fine strategy. It's also a lot more comfortable. Got a fold top pair here. Um, Jax, I don't really know what he's... I guess he's ripping a straight or trips, but I'm going to call this. I have a six of diamonds. I have a hand that, like, maybe he's doing that, which I think he should not do, but Jungle has been known to do. A bet range on the left. On the right, we flop very well. Go with check raise. Um, left table. I'm going to go with check. It's not like I don't have good blockers at all. 
Uh, so even though I turn like an awkward amount of equity to check fold, um, I just kind of hope it goes check check because if I had this hand with like a queen even, then it becomes like a good multi street barrel hand. Definitely bluffing. Am I bluffing small or big? That is the question. 8 8 with spades. Um, it's a good hand. Um, I think his play is very reasonable all around. Um, this one's interesting. I don't know if folding out a straight is that valuable here. I'm just going to check here in my bet. Mm-mm. This is like, I want to, I kind of want to pot, but he's like, he's gone so thinly in some spots that I think check raising becomes more valuable, but there he did not go thin with his straight pot probably would have worked better. But I mean, you know, being results oriented, seeing his actual hand. Mm, let's start by betting. It's nice to have a hand that can bet call against an aggressive opponent. Small bet range on the left. Oh, this is a hand I would like to check, usually, if I had a checking range. And right, I think this is a check. It's an unfortunate river. Uh, it's obviously a good enough hand to value bet, but by the time you bet um, turn and river big, it gets a little too dicey. And here, I don't really know what to do, to be honest. Um, it's like slightly thin to bet bet jam, but it doesn't work great as other lines, I think. I think I like jamming rather than check calling. Unblocking the king. Okay, we chop it up. I might look that up later. I think it it could be too thin. Um, I'm going to call again on the right. I'm not static about it. Here, bet small with my range. I don't know about that bet. Here. I guess he can have it. I don't know. I don't really love this and being kind of sloppy with a smaller sizing. I was just like hoping to make sure that he raises boats, but I think he can see through that, to be honest. He might not have raised a boat. Yeah, well, he had an under full. He had a... I was hoping to get him to raise 10-9, but he had 9-9. Nine, nine. With a queen. Um, I don't know. I think once I bet the turn, I should not be looking to check the river. Could small bet, but want to. I don't know. I think my play is okay. The the only problem is, 
I don't really have a, like I don't have a three quarters pot sizing on river. So that was kind of just a made up thing. Seems close, but I think it's a fold. Delay C bet here, and this is a good spot to follow through with the river bluff as well. I'm less sure about the river bluff because I could definitely win. I think I have to show this down. I think ace 10 is too good. I could win. King 699. Well, he wasn't folding. He might have been raising river. He is in the tank, facing a pre-flop raise and a flop, where he's 100% check. I guess he's dealing with some technical issues. I, I'm not uh, not criticizing him. Deuce of clubs. Is it good enough? I don't think it's good enough to start betting on this board with two straights out and a bunch of cards I don't block. Interesting that he's going uh, to Lacey about pot here. He has two sizings, I believe, as do I. Um, just a very easy check call. As with check with this software is not always reliable and showing me his hand. He had just the gut shot, low gut shot. I think the pot sizing is to try to fold out bigger gut shots. Uh, left table, you can obviously bet a hand like this on the flop. I went with check. And now it's kind of a clear turn check. Mm. Well, this seems pretty close on the right, on the left. And it's pretty hard for him to have some kind of bluff here. I actually am going to fold. I mean, I'm not calling with a nine, so he wins. Um, got a call flop here on the left. It's it's a little uncomfortable because he's barreling turns more than most. And now we just check the river, obviously. Is he considering betting 8-7 there? Because it's way too thin. 
Um, and here we're just going to blast off. Uh, let's check the swap. I mean, it's not great to have diamonds once he calls turn as far as choosing a river bluff, but sevens are too good, I think. I mean, he's betting so small. This hand's not supposed to be a call, but I don't know. It's not supposed to be a call, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Ace of diamonds. I think that hand is supposed to be a call. Left is a thin three. It's I mean, it's a three bet, but if he's limping, it becomes less of a three bet. Now he raised fold, folded, and also, just keep in mind, he hasn't... Um, I don't think I've seen him limp yet. Oh, I have once. Never mind. I mean, I'm not folding ace king here, but you know he's repping better, obviously. That's an unfortunate river because he's gonna have a lot of semi bluffs that have now made a straight. And he's gonna continue bluffing a lot of three five, three deuce. I mean, it's a pretty bad calling hand. I have the ace of diamonds. I only have a king. I have a I have a four by now pretty often. I don't have a five or a seven. I don't know. I'm not folding here. <laughs> Very interesting river. And just clear value bet. It is a spot where I could see him. I mean, if he has like ace ace or ace six or ace deuce, doing a lot of checking, but if, if he trapped me, he trapped me. I have two sizings on the right. Here I'm going with small. I mean, you never big bet, I think, like top and bottom pair. This is just incredibly standard. Uh, clear check on the left. Um, or plus 10K, I think. Reminder that the the um, stakes are 10x these. As we have a cross book going, we get check raised on King Jack four. Our 10 high flush, not thrilling. I'm not going to fold yet. All right, so he's saying he's saying he has me beat. Weird one here on the left. Um, Queen of Diamonds, Ace of Diamonds. It's close. I mean, it's probably a fold over here. I probably lose, but I'm not willing to fold this. He's he bluffs enough. Yeah. I was definitely suspicious when I had the ten high flush, but 
he, he, he's got a lot of leverage. He's got multi-street leverage. Could this be a weird turn pot? I don't think so. It's not a fold. Interesting river. Uh, this might not be a flop check with two back doors, but yeah, it probably isn't because I get to bet like value bet the queen of diamonds turn, etc. Uh, here he had my double gut shot. It's a pretty good river bluffing hand, actually, that he opted not to bluff. Interesting. Um, this seems, I don't know. It's thin, but kind of feels like he would have bet a better hand at some point. Here we have an easy pot, I think. It's not the worst check raise, too, but. He called with sevens, with a three, and good blockers. And here, this is a weird one. I think I'm going to go for it, despite having remarkable blockers. Like, having three diamonds is bad, but having a three and an eight are good. And, I don't know, not having a six is not the end of the world there, because... It means he's going to have a lot of hands like just 6-5 that uh, have a very comfortable river fold. Definitely starting to bet with fives here. Let's set up potentially a multi street bluff. Easy call of the three bats. Here on the left table, my hand is, I mean, it obviously looks nice. It's a flush, but it's better than it looks because it's hard to make flushes in limp pots. However, the 10 kind of hurts my plans a little bit. Right table, easy call. I think I probably just bet here. Uh, yeah. So he checks to me on the right. I mean, my hand's a check. It's a bad river. Over here, he had... Um, eight, six, nine, standard call from him. It's a small bet. It's on the queen of clubs. What do we make of that? Um, going, going for a check raise on the turn, perhaps. This is weird. Do I blast off here or not? I'm going to not. Um, my hand's pretty bad. I don't think he has a flush. I'm confused here, to be honest. Oh, I'm running out of time. Yikes, how did I use all my time bank already? Um, I'll be curious to see that one. I, I don't know. I couldn't put into words and I couldn't put into thoughts quickly enough why I had a weird feeling. Um, 
I don't block either straight here. I block the five, which is kind of bad. It's close. I think, actually, he probably doesn't bluff the five. That one's close, too. Obviously, I have the option to raise, but... I don't know. Jungle's not the... He seems to not believe certain lines. We'll put it that way. And so my job is to pick the lines that he does believe and bluff in those and pick the ones where he, that he does not believe and skip bluffs in those. Same hand of sorts. Interesting flop bet from him. Um, he's definitely more mergy than I am with his flop bets. Which makes raising this okay. Well, I guess I'll call though. Um, this is a fold. I don't know why I don't believe this at all, but my hand's so bad. Um, yeah. And here, uh, don't go crazy with threes. The board's going to change so often. Like, I have no additional equity. Nice hand and a not so nice hand. Interesting turn. Because I block the jack. Um, I might check and raise river. Eh, it's really questionable. And now I'm in a little bit of trouble. Um, my hand's just full with no straight blockers and no diamond. Doesn't really matter that I have king king jack when he's not repping hands with a king or a jack. Um, he might even bluff some weak king x when everything gets there. Uh, so the turn play is kind of iffy. If I didn't block the jack, then uh, I'd always be betting there. I, I don't know. Bet here. On like a 9 or a 10, we'll check and try to win a showdown on a other card like this. We'll bluff. He's going to bet a really high frequency on the left table. King 5-4. I think it's... Interesting when he checks. Um... I'm not sure what to make of the check. Start betting. See, most people check a lot of straight draws, so that worries me a little, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think how to size. Half pots. I view that as weak, but what am I going to do about it? I 
lose the pot is what I'm going to do about it. I don't know. The, I'm not thrilled with uh, all my options. The reason I didn't bet is because he likes to raise these turns a lot. Yeah, that's a pretty nice flop for our hand. A uh, pretty clear bet. Do six without a redraw is, you know, less of a bet. Here, this hand could be a raise. I think it makes a pretty good raise. Um, and so the question is, do I wait for a non-spade turn or do I stack off here? Because he could just have a... Because it's too, if he has king, king, 10, 9, it's going to be unfortunate on a, like, five of spades if he bets. Although he's not going to bet. Mm -mm. Yeah, let's just get it in now and fold over here. Wow, top set. So I could have saved money on a spade turn, but not on the jack of clubs. And we are now losing, so let's change the color to red, unfortunately. And down 25k, right? Wait, no, 3k, 30? Hold on. I raised a limp here, so I'm going to bet. Check call here. Um, we started with 30k, yeah. So I lost both those pots. So that went pretty fast, but, you know, heads up yellow. Um, I'm going to bet. This one, I don't know. I mean, you're supposed to have a club to bet, but I have backdoors. And supposed to is, you know, a very general, uh, you know, blanket statements like that do not apply to all. Do not apply universally. I guess sometimes they do. <laughs> um, but that one, I, I'm not confident that you just never, I don't, I don't think you never bet with uh, without a club. Hmm. Seems a little bit close, actually, the way that he plays. Did not expect to see him bat. Um, I guess I fold. I mean, I have the worst hand I can possibly have. No diamonds. I guess I fold. Um, it's weird, though. Um, the reason it's weird is that he... Well, let me play the, these hands first. I could probably just pot here. Um, yeah, doesn't have anything, obviously, but um, the reason it's weird is that, like, he checks, he bets flop a lot of king x of diamonds, a lot of ace x of diamonds, so, like, I, I guess queen i flush draws and worse makes some sense, but it gets kind of thin to start, um, <laughs> blasting, like, low flushes on the river, but I think he does that probably. I guess I'm going to check raise here.
I mean, it's really hard to have big flushes in. Uh, what's it called? In limp pots. Obviously, he can have the king high flush, but so be it. I think I, I think I check raise there and call the three bet with three hearts in my hand. He had a potential bluff, so I like my, well, whatever. Being results oriented. That was the only way I was going to make some money. Small bet there. Here, second nuts. With the redraw, I'm going to start with the call. I think I just bet here. There's a lot of like things that I can deny equity to and get called by that are worse, and I just don't think he's going to bet very often when checked to. Yes, I'm, you know, you have to go with the second nuts with a redraw, with double redraw here. Can't fold this if he leads. I did expect a lot of leads. Um, did expect a lot of leads. I don't know though. I go for it. Get raised here, not folding yet, but I kind of think this is strong. Interesting turn. Obviously, good turn for my hand and range. So the question is, um, I guess I just check call. I don't know. He had a seven nut hearts. That makes a lot of sense. Um, check this. Let's bet this one. I think. I think. Yeah. Oh, I have plus 30 in red. It's minus 30, but now it's minus 20 or 15 or so. Um, Let's call. See small bet on the left. Right table. I mean, I don't have a very good calling hand. So you don't usually you don't have a like high betting frequency here, but I think this makes a really good betting hand. I block none of the pairs, and even though he'll be kind of aggressive, like unblocking the ace, he's going to check back a lot of ace x. Obviously, I need to bluff that turn sometimes as well with, you know, a nine blocker or is this a call or a fold? I don't know. Probably a fold against a limper. Not against a limp, of course, but against somebody who limps. Their open range is strengthened slightly. I 
easy check back. Easy check back on both. Um, I mean, easy call. Mostly beat a bluff, but here, easy call as well. Interesting. So, I mean, I think I need a bluff. The problem is he might just like get here with king high clubs and be like, well, let me check call instead of bet. Um, ten seven seems like a tough call. Probably thinks I don't have ten seven because I check flop. Um, I unlock clubs though, so this is pretty good raising hand. I want him to have the flush. Eh, I mean, it's a pretty good raising. Yeah, seven is better for raising. But can't pick your four cards every time. Otherwise, I just would have picked a boat and value raised. Or I guess a straight flush was out. I would have picked the straight flush. Not that big with my full range. I might start going a little smaller on these. But this is what I've been doing. Um, interesting. Pot's turn. I mean, 10 is a good blocker. Does he ever have ace ace? I don't think so. He could, though. He's a little wild. I have a 6 and an 8. The 10 is good, the 6 and the 8 are bad. Ace 10. What are the bluffs? 5, 6, 7, 10, or 9, or Ace. Yeah, there are a lot of those. All right. Ace 10, 5, 6. That was one of those where my heart wasn't in it, but my mind was. Sometimes you got to trust your heart. I'm uh, going to keep betting here. We're down 10K now. Not that I need to update it every, not 105K, thankfully. I'm going to bet to deny equity. He's got a lot of just like eight, five, four, three type hands that peel flop. And my hand's good enough to bet call. So I kind of like just not letting him dictate the action. I keep barreling on the left. On the right, we call. Lead on a club. Lead on a queen. Do we lead on any other cards? Do we lead on a nine? I'm not sure. Okay, well, the queen of clubs. We do. Okay, easy bluff on the left. Don't make two correct decisions, Jungle Man. That would be that'd be frustrating.
He's deep in the tank. We made the fold when we had the nut flush. And now we are repping the nut flush and he makes the call. Good call. I mean, he had a flush, which I... It's not supposed to fold flush, really. But he could in that spot, repping it pretty well. Um, pretty good spot to raise. I say it. Um, he can have a lot of bluffs. He can have a lot of flushes. Blocking the ace is the best card to block, so it's better to raise this than to raise like eight four three. I think this is a check raise over here. It's a little bit thin. King six, does he check king six? Maybe. He was bluffing. This time he was value betting. We can be sure of that. Or almost sure, unless he wants to... He has like 8-4, and he's just going to go for the Hail Mary. All right, we've 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 been firing some bluffs lately. They've had mixed results. But at least we're firing. Um, down 15. No spade. I think I'm just going to check fold here. Uh, I'm going to check the eights and bluff river. It's a weird river now. Okay. Hmm. It's weird to half pot here because I'm repping like boats, kind of. But I actually think he'll, well, he might think it's a little polar, but I think he thinks I like to be tricky more than, <laughs> like, more than is good for me. Um, too tricky for my own good. That's what I was trying to find the words for. So I think he kind of believes those kind of size down things in different scenarios. Jungle goes for the river check raise. Makes sense. Easy call over here. Not the river I would have chosen if I were picking rivers. We're not going to turn 6 4 into a bluff. Ace Jack 6. It's a little bit thin, but it's fine, certainly. Easy check on the right. On the left, it's pretty interesting. I actually think he's going to have trouble um, calling a bet. So I think he's just going to... I'd rather let him bet himself. It's a pretty tempting raise. Yeah. 
Here he's half potting. Why is he half potting? Potted queen 10. Okay. I think raise would not work against that. Here, I'm going with the small raise because he half potted um, with the redraw. And now I'm going to check. He's checking king seven five. He does rep flush draws pretty well here, unfortunately. Six eight somehow? No, he doesn't have six eight. Um okay. No clubs in my hand, that's not good. Does he have ace five, maybe? Ace four, I mean. Would he bluff that? Yeah. If he somehow has six, seven, what do you bet? Probably not. Um this is a weird one. I guess I fold with no clubs, but I'm a little suspicious. Blocking the five and turning a little bit of equity, I think it's a good turn bet. It's weird because he's been betting these flops like every time with every like middling strength hand. Okay. <laughs> he finally checks and he can raise turn. All right, jungle. You got me. Fell into your trap. Okay, he's three betting. I bet he's noticed that he's um, twice recently checked flop in a three bet pot, and I bet twice, and he's folded. So that's something to be aware that he might trap more than he otherwise would in some of these spots. This hand's just a fold. I know it looks kind of nice, but it's not against that sizing. Uh, probably against half pot is right around where it's, you know, fine. Okay, easy check call. Oh, I actually misread my hand here. So now it's not, I thought I had do seven. Um, now it's not an easy check call. It's just fold. All right, let's pay attention. I believe this is a good four betting hand, but yeah, it is. The problem is it, it gets kind of ugly on a lot of flops. It gets dumb. It's, it's dominated on. Um, like a lot of flops where he's going to lead. Probably not that one. Guess we'll bet.
guess he has it over here. It's weird. Problem on the right is he's going to check like everything. But then I have a weird decision. And I have a weird decision. There's like a one six percent chance I can win at showdown. I just don't think he's folding an ace when I take this line, so okay, full house. We had a king queen four deuce. Okay. So that all makes sense. Story checks out. We're down thirty. Maybe more after this hand. Uh, but I think very clear bluff on the left. Just has the knots. Or eight eight. I don't, I don't know. I'm always suspicious that he's bluffing, but shouldn't be bluffing that much in that spot. Um, random. Oh, I timed out because this. Unfortunate. I was going to call. It's this weird thing where um, your time bank is auto activated once you put money into the pot. So in 99% of river situations, my time bank auto activates, but when uh, it goes limit check pre, it does not. I mean, this is such a strong hand. It feels kind of a shame to raise right away, but there we go. Okay, that's good. Standard to small bet. Right table, I probably need to bluff half pot, but he doesn't let me. Let's see, have here. Um. I think I need to just pot. I don't think um, I don't think checking works. He has too much showdown. Like he has showdown value. Just only well, not always, but almost always has showdown value. The question is, is he more likely to bet than he is to call? With a hand like 3 3. I think probably not. Four three. Ah, that's too bad. I thought he was gonna call. Um 
This might be an okay pot. I don't know, actually. what he had. Probably just show down King 10 high. I think so. for the check raise. Interesting. So on the right, this turn is a bet, but it's kind of a... I don't know how to describe it. It's a merge. But blocking, you know, top two, blocking turn two pair is really valuable. And he can fold some jack th dry jack three. All I do here, raise, call. Some weird river spot as is that um he probably has a flush actually on the right uh left table i mean it's a kind of obvious potential bluff spot but the nine and a deuce matter not really at all ace four ace Um, hmm. Ah, he's jungle. That's the problem. But I think, I think, I don't know. I think even though he's jungle, he might not do that enough. Uh, we'll never know. Interesting river on the right. He's only repping better hands than mine, but can't fold a straight with a club yet, I think. Uh, he's betting 80. I'm just going to call. Okay. I mean, I guess I win, but there's no point in betting. Uh, on the offsuit three, this is a good turn bet. On the three of spades, I think it's just a check. Uh, let's call and flop a set of deuces. I think this is just a good check call hand. Uh, 
and it's supposed to be a pot, uh, pot only spot. Let's check call here. Well played by, I mean, he's supposed to bet that. It's standard from him. Here we get called. Interesting turn. Weird spot. I think I half pot rather than. That's a weird one. Okay. Yeah, nothing he can do. Um, I think in theory he's supposed to check jam that flop, but those spots are really awkward. Uh, or actually open pot is maybe what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to open pot. Mm, yeah, let's play. This is close. We're down closer to that's going to be an interesting spot. I'm obviously calling on the right. Um, on the left, I'm going to check. Uh, it's a pretty weak jack five combo. So I think checking makes sense. We'll have pot. This is interesting. I think we just have to blast off. Back over here. Down 10. Not as, um, pots are not as huge as they were yesterday. Or at least the swings aren't, though. I guess the pots are of similar size. Um, I mean, it makes sense with a lot of value hands. I don't know. Uh, this seems like a fold. It makes sense with some bluffs too over there, of course. But low on time bank, so. Good bet bet here. It's a little too thin, I think, to pop pot. I think this makes a good small bet because I block like the ace and the queen. So he's gonna have more like 9x, 10x, jack jack or something. And I bet's turn with a lot of jack jack. Whereas if I have a queen unblocking the ace, it's different. He actually had ace eight. Um, I thought he bets, I thought he usually bets flop and usually bets turn with that hand. So something to keep an eye on. He's playing a little more coy. I think betting here has got to be the play. Um, not thrilling facing a big bet, but 
obviously calling queen 6 3 3. I think this might just be a give up with no five. <laughs> eh. Might have worked against that. Might not have. Eight five is a you know pretty decent calling him. That's big. I think I just have to fold. I just have to fold. My range is pretty strong on that card. Nice bluff, jungle man dam. Let's rip 20. Check with king queen, of course. Makes sense. Interesting. Checks. Um, I'm actually going to check. I feel like he's just... I feel like he has a really weak hand. I don't know. That's, that's how I feel. Um, beat all the two pair, but man, it's tough to have a diamond. So. Oh, let's just call here. Still think he has a weak hand. He might have turned two pair or something. he might keep bluffing if he had a really weak hand. So maybe I was wrong. Mm. Excuse me. Because it's Sparrow's birthday today when, uh, when our son barged in our room at 5 a.m. It was my job to get up with him. Um... Just check call with nine nine eight. <clears throat> oh. I don't believe him here, but what am I? I mean, am I calling with nines? Let's say it's five, sure. I don't know. I don't believe him. I mean, this is a terrible calling hand, but I just kind of don't believe him. Okay, he has it. Hmm. 
plus one on the left. I, I don't like, don't believe or disbelieve. Just kind of don't have an opinion. Let's fold this to three vet. I mean, it's probably not an open, but it's the worst that could happen. That, that was sort of the worst that could happen. Oh. So remember I said he's seen me, he's like check called flop, check folded turn a few times. So I am being cognizant of the possibility I'm being trapped. Um, this hand is not the worst betting hand. It's not the best betting hand either. Oh. I can just check call here. I think it's too thin to is it too thin to pot though? No, it's not. I should have potted. Because he doesn't have six seven often. He's not gonna have jack seven or um or whatchamacallit very often. Um it's just a call. Like it's an okay raising hand, but I think having the seven as well makes it more of a call. He was going for value, and I think that's a good value bet. Okay, easy check down here. I guess I'll check back here. Um, It's a weird line as a bluff, but jungle's the one to do it. So I'm going to call with an ace and a king and a seven. They're all good. Because I block seven, seven, but he still had it. I think potting turn is good here. I am repping exactly one hand or two hands, really. Uh, five five and uh, six seven, but actually like nine five seven and stuff like that. I just bet so. I guess I bet fold this. Weird that he goes under pot. So I have any two pair I would call. Um, to win an open ender with a pair, he might be bluffing. The problem is he might have queen jack 10 and then it gets pretty ugly. It's really hard for me to have the best hand with five. Um, 
Kind of let him have it. He might, like, I find the sizing so strange. Yeah, he bluffed me. I, I find the sizing so strange. Um, and it, it definitely made me suspicious, but I mean... He got me. Like, yeah, if I had any two pair or something, I would not fold, but with the bluff portion of my range, you know, I don't know. Nice hand jungle man down. Well earned, for sure, because that's a risky move to make. I wonder if he's going with... I guess he's going with it against a jam, and we're flipping. Because <laughs> uh, he had a pretty good hand. For, I mean, he had a lot of equity with his whatever, with his pretty bad hand. Checks to me over here. Start with a check. Call here. A lot gets there on the five, unfortunately. Go for value here, but I'm gonna check. And now, I guess I'm gonna fold my five. I'm gonna show down my nine eight and lose. Let's call. It's supposed to be a three bet. But he's playing a little tight pre-flop. All right, we're down 30. Feeling okay about our plays. I think I just pot pot. It gets a little thin, but... This is a weird one. I'm going to pot because he could fold some, like, dry kings and could call with worse. And now, I think it's a little too strong to bluff with. I don't know. I don't know. Here, this is a check for sure. Both are check raise candidates. I think this makes a really good check raise on the right. He has a flush, king nine, queen nine. You know, it's not the best blocker, but it's pretty good. Because it's just hard for me to have, um, like, if I bluff the turn with a heart, then I'm just bluffing the river. So. Uh, I think the check raise looks very credible. I think basically anything worse than a jack high flush, he's folding there. <clears throat> uh, so I'll fold that one. Call here and bluff river. Uh, if he bets, I'm not going to bluff raise the nine of spades. But if he checks, I think it's a very credible line for me to bluff with. Um, I don't know. 
I maybe should have bet 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 on the left. with all the back doors. I don't know about this one, to be perfectly honest with you. <clears throat> it's probably a call in there. Very weak version of 9.8. I'll check this one. And um, you saw me do that earlier with Jack Five. It's not a, like a trap. It's just that my hands are not that good with Dry Nine Eight. Um, but it's nice to have the board coverage when um, when you do hit the nine or the eight to actually be able to have a full house. So your weakest two pair become checkbacks, not to trap, but just because they're not good enough. Um, I'm just gonna bet half pot. It's very thin. It's very thin. But he's like I don't know. I think he's playing a lot of better hands differently. The exception of Queen Jack Jack Seven, which might check raise. Cool. Uh left table. We have that. Can I see? Pipped. Um, yeah, he had eight deuce with clubs, so weaker two pair. <clears throat> Min raised pre and half pot flop. I guess I call. It's kind of close. He's half potting over here. I don't understand his sizing scheme. Um, like his sizing strategy in so many different spots, he's using half pot, two thirds pot, third pot. He's using it all. Got a call on the right. Um, not beating value, but if he's doing some mergy stuff, I'm ahead. I have some equity to improve. And, um, be bluffs like that. That's a little mergy, but mostly a bluff. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go for the check call. I usually bet um, full range on flush boards, but when it's three low straight and a flush, I Sometimes pump the brakes. I think it's nice to have a hand that can check call because then it looks like I have nothing to, you know, bluff with on the river. Now, so small. Here we'll bet full range, actually. Yeah, I don't know what the small bet, I, I'm not in love with my small bet. Here I might small bet again to deny equity. That makes a pretty good check call. The problem here is that like he does keep calling with queen 10, a lot of those, and so then I get stuck making a river decision. So I actually dislike this. I think I should check call. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. Don't like when I make mistakes. He is punishing me for it. Um,
problem is like he actually has a lot of equity with his semi bluffs. It's pretty annoying. Um, and he just has value sometimes. I'm gonna let him have it. It's not even out of the question that he has a hand like kings, which has me dead. And I'm gonna bluff all board pair rivers. Okay, we're down 40 now after that <clears throat> unfortunate series of events. A half pot. I'm repping like seven eight. I mean, this is a similar hand in, in hand strength, but does he think I'm gonna bluff? I don't know. He might actually just really, really believe this, which makes the bet not that good. Hmm. Every session I've been uh, losing at the start. I mean, this isn't the start, this is the middle, but... Not gotten off on the right foot in these. Um, let's... Pop hot. I don't believe him, but it's pretty hard to call with tens. His bluffs are going to have over cards, and I don't know. Uh, much better hands to call with, I guess, the better way to say it. Pretty similar cards in my hands. Uh, he checks. This time I'm going to bet. Really know what to make of this. Range on this board. Probably it's King Jack. Um, Flush. Ace, ace, ten, or something like that. Is he turning? Problem is, he can have like jack eight or better. He has so many value hands, it's just too hard to call. Bet here. Um, we'll bet on both. Could go big or small on the little left. I want small, which I think is okay. And then um,
I don't think going small, like I'm not really repping the straight when I go small on turn. So going small on river is not going to trick him, I think, into raising weak flushes. Hmm. Hmm. I don't have much equity here, so I'm going to check. It's too hard to win at showdown, so I'm going to bluff on both tables. Got to fold at least one of them, right? It wasn't that one. It wasn't that one either. That's a really thin call, um, both on flop and on river. Uh, so he really didn't believe me. I wonder why he didn't believe me on the river. This doesn't really matter that he blocks a deuce or a nine. Nine a little bit, deuce it doesn't. Because I'm repping flushes. Um, if he doesn't believe you, he doesn't believe you. Um, sometimes what happens there is I'm in his spot and I like think forever about raising the river and then I'm like, no, I'm not going to. And then I'm like, well, maybe I'll just call. Uh, whereas if I, you had a kind of pure bluff catcher, you think along the lines of call or fold the whole time rather than waste a lot of mental bandwidth thinking about, uh, well, do I bluff? This is thin on the left, but I think with the queens and the gut shot, it's good. I also get to like check raise on a nine river. Here he had a seven. Um, this is interesting. Do I small bet? No, it's too thin. I didn't expect him to bat, but here we are. Um, 
Queens are bad, seven, five are bad. Yeah, spades is bad, all my cards are kind of bad. I'm gonna have to make some big hands quickly because Henry Kilbane said I was winning 80k today. And Jungle Man might not play much longer. So let's win a few big pots, shall we? Note I'm uh actually this is important. So I'm joking when I say that. And it's important to point that out because that's actually an attitude that that people go into playing with a lot when they're down or even when they're even just like it's a, it's a form of tilt where you just autopilot and just wait for the big pots. And then you kind of let your opponent win all the small pots um, because you're not really inter You're just interested in gambling. You're not interested in, you know, uh, playing solid poker or playing well and, and battling. Um, so it's a really bad state of mind to get into. So I'll fold this one. Um, so I was saying that in jest, don't actually approach poker from that state of mind. Well, it's not the worst candidate to check back on the right against. Because, like, dry deuces, it's not that they're thin, but you, you want some hands to slow play. Easy pot on the turn. Left table, I could bet flop. Maybe I should, but no, I just didn't think he was folding. Kind of like bluffing now and bombing river. A little unfortunate because I don't rep many 3x, but like I think I would play 9 3 this way. I think I would play queen 3 this way sometimes. So I am going to go for it. Obviously 9-9, nine, nine, but that's very few combos. But basically, like, I would pot a lot of two pair on this turn because I just really think two pair is good. And a call here on the right. I think he's bluffing enough. Cool, it worked. He's eight, he's four. I don't know, I don't believe him, so let's try. Yeah. Sometimes you can feel it. That's one of those ones where I 
couldn't quite explain what was going on in my head. It was not fully conscious. Unfortunate river on the right. Um, I mean, it's just a check. He had some kind of ace high or something. Oh, wow. Jungleman had nine high and did not bluff river. He just viewed it as a bad spot to bluff, which I guess might be. Because I very often have a full house, or better. This is a little bit thin. Because he will play some weak 7x this way. What is he doing? Um supposed to be a bluff over here. It makes no sense. I block an ace, I block a nine. I'm just going to call. I don't know. It's so weird. Queen nine. Bluff worked over here, so a few pots going our way. I'm going to try to get that 80k win, 10k at a time. It's a fold in theory, I think, with ace eight. Pots, not going to fold yet. Not going to bluff ace high. Left, he has a lot of blushes and trips. He's repping blushes and trips extremely well. I have 5-4. I have no diamond. I have an easy fold. Uh, although raising is not out of the question. King 6-4-3. We're a little deep. Let's flop straight or something. Or something. Uh, definitely not. Well, actually, I think Solver might sometimes raise a hand like this, but uh, so that you have some like trips in your raise flop check turn range. But 
let's just keep it simple and just call my weakest trips. And I feel like it's kind of mandatory that I go for value and protection here. I think I have Pot River, it's kind of close. Oh, I didn't realize I have a set. I actually thought I made jacks up. So half pot is not close now. The question is, should I pot it? And I don't like, it's a weird situation where I'm capped very clearly. So if I pot, I start to incentivize a lot of weird stuff, but but he's probably not, you know, probably not check raising there very often. Uh, he had king and a seven. He probably would have called pot. Misreading my hand is not a good sign. Okay, so don't have a seven five. I do have a four. The problem is he goes really thin here. I mean, my hand's pretty terrible for calling, but the jack is bad. I don't know. He's like, I'm going to put on my cape. I don't know. I don't know. This is not a call in theory. Nope. Just has the nuts. Uh, I'll take my cape off now. Uh, let's look them up. Oh, thin. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where to or how to justify my bad call. I mean, I think it's fine. I'm fine with trusting my reads. Uh, right table, you could four bet this hand. Uh, it's really unhappy facing a bet this big, but I think a bet this big is not super frequently like, um, I mean, it's not like dry aces very often. It's not a lot of straights. Um, It is a lot of flushes or flush blockers. And I mean, if he puts out a big bet here, I can't do anything with jacks with no heart. That's what he does. So here on the river, I think, uh, I think it's too thin to do anything but small bet. I mean, I could half pot, but I don't have that sizing. Let's just check, decide. Smelled this coming, but I mean, it's a really bad calling hand, of course. 
Um, I just, uh, yeah. When you have a bad calling hand and no read, then you just fold. We're going downhill again. Let's call this down 40. It's like 42, probably. Okay. All right, Henry, here it comes. <laughs> Stack him uh, on both tables here. And then I'll take it from there. Uh, left table's too strong to raise, just call. Not really the turn I wanted, even though I have the second nuts. <clears throat> Two flush draws. I think I need to protect my hand, although he's repping. It's kind of weird. The problem is he's repping my hand. He's repping like a redraw, but he's too wild. So, I mean, he knows what he's doing to my raise already. He's not like going to be put in a tough spot so it doesn't really matter what my timing or what it seems like i have there i just have the nuts almost always and he's not betting like he's not potting two pair i think too bad we didn't get action on the left i mean i think i have to bet my hand all right but we'll take the, the small win uh bet here bet here Down 30. Yikes. He is repping better than my hand, mostly. But we'll start with a call. And then here, I guess I just give up. He's got a lot of weak stuff, but I don't know how well I rep it. Could small bet, but I don't even have a spade. Weird. Young man's the wrong person to do this to. <laughs> Actually, I, I think I probably should pot um, and pot fold because now if he raises, I'm supposed to fold, I think. But he's going to have some like ace king 10 type hands. Three bad blockers here. We've hit a few flops lately. Can't take the credit for that. With the nine block two, I like just checking and check calling with kings. I don't know about this. I should maybe just bet. I mean, I'm not folding King King Nine, even though I'm not really beating value. Cool.
I'm very suspicious, but my hand's pretty bad. So what do I really do about it? I can call. It's gonna have a lot of equity. I have check river and it's gonna be uncomfortable. I'm gonna call because his draws are often not gonna have much equity. It's a very interesting river. I don't know how I feel about it. I almost feel like he's going to value bet perfectly. Like any set or better. Nope, he checked us straight. All right, well, my turn call was not great. I was drawing dead. Um, on the double flush draw board, I just felt like he would have enough, um, like very weak bluffs because he he has to fear the check raise there, so he can't bet like a mid strength draw. I don't know. I think um, I mean it's a mistake in theory, and I didn't I think, and I didn't really have a great reason to do it. So, I'm not in love with that play. Here we'll bet. Showdown, queen four, probably lose, but hmm. makes sense. I guess ace six, six, two back doors, we'll check back. It's actually not the turn we were aiming for. I think I might check back again. Shut down my deuces, probably lose. Yeah, he's got a lot of value, potential value hands and not as many potential bluffs, and I mean, my blockers are pretty bad. Queen five, let's travel times out. Okay. All right, this is gonna be GG. I think queen five is a little too thin. So I'll just check call. He got here with some junk, you know, deuce four, seven, ten. Just let him bluff with that. We had queen, deuce seven, jack. All right, good game, jungle. I, um, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, normally after these, I like to, to go over big hands and talk to you all, but um, I have... Uh, my wife's birthday to uh, get to. So I will leave you with that. We'll be back um, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. We might start on time tomorrow. Uh, I did lose 30K almost exactly. So we'll just leave that there. Um, 
I'm fine with the way I played today. Um, a few mistakes, but mostly cool with it. Um, yeah, back tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. I appreciate you being here with me. Keep me company. And that's about it. Um, I mentioned at the top of this, but if you want to see a two-hour strategy breakdown of Miiverse Jungle, um, that's in my newsletter, which has been linked in the chat a few times um, and in the description uh, of this stream. Um, so check that out. It's free. And I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.